One in three deaths involving women are heart related. I want to say that again. One in three deaths heart related. Wow. Women have a much higher chance of developing heart disease than men. Dr. Gladys Velarde is a cardiologist with UF Health Jacksonville is joining us this morning via Zoom. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, uh, Jennifer. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, we appreciate the insight that you're getting ready to give us because it's so important, particularly for our female viewers. So we know that heart disease is the leading cause of death you know, for both men and women. But studies showed that women wait longer to seek medical care than men. Why do you suppose that is? Well, th there, there are several factors, but I think we all know that we uh, women uh, put ourselves last. We are... Uh, um, and the majority of times the caregivers and we worry more about our husbands, our kids, our neighbors, our, our friends. And we forget that we are, uh, we are susceptible. Heart disease and is an equal opportunity killer and nearly 500,000 women die every year of heart disease. So yes, we take longer. We are, and that leads to under diagnosis and under treatment. What are the warning signs then for women? Because I think the other part here is, is that women often assume uh, that it's, it's something else, perhaps because the warning signs are not as typical as they are as the same in men. Right. There's a little bit of a misconception there that women do not have the, uh, the typical uh, symptoms. Women do have the typical symptoms. What happens is that women have other symptoms, extra layers of symptoms. They often say that women are more complicated. Well, it's, it's true when it comes to presentations and symptoms of cardiovascular disease. Um, so women typically have the chest discomfort, but in addition, they're short of breath, they're fatigued. So things get a little confusing to the providers. And especially when this has not been in the radar as much in the last, you know, in the last decade or so, we've gained much more information that we present differently uh, and differently in the sense that we have more symptoms associated with the typical symptoms, if that makes any sense. It, it does. And it's interesting because, uh, you know, in, in, in interviewing cardiologists like yourself, you know, I was <clears throat> surprised also to hear that that in addition to pain in the chest, women can also experience pain kind of in their neck and their jaw as well, which you wouldn't necessarily associate perhaps with a heart attack. Uh, that is correct. Um, the more uh, central the pain is when you have an it associated with the stress and activity, uh, the more likely it's related to a heart condition. But women tend to have more of all the other associated symptoms, whether it is radiation to the neck, radiation to the arm, but specifically fatigue, shortness of breath, feeling like you don't have the same energy as you did before with your usual routines. So you got to pay attention to that. Now, now, men do experience back, neck, jaw pain, uh, stomach ache, but the fatigue is sort of a little bit more towards the women, especially older women. But uh, but all those symptoms are more uh, more profound, if you will, in 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 women, and the chest discomfort gets drowned down yeah. by all the associated symptoms. What can we do to reduce our risk? Oh, uh, the number one thing is first to acknowledge that this is a, a it's a real issue. Uh, you know, we know that cancer is devastating, uh, but cancer is not the first killer of women. And we have to acknowledge that cardiovascular disease in all, in all its forms, it's a, a real danger and the number one killer of women for, for many, many years. And so acknowledge this is a problem and know your risk factors. Know those risk factors. If you don't know them, then you're behind the, behind the ball. You have to talk to your provider and say, what's my cholesterol? What's my sugar level? What is my BMI, my, my weight? to my height? Uh, is it within the, the normal range? Um, how how do you feel my my activity is what is what is recommended that I should be that you should be doing in terms of activity and then know your family history there are those risk factors that you cannot uh, change which is your age and your family history the the 
the parents, your parents, you cannot change your parents. And so your family history brings that um, that layer that raises your risk if it is there. And you have to know your risk factors. Excellent questions to be asking all of the time, particularly as we get older. Dr. Gladys Velarde, a cardiologist with UF Health. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, Channel 4.